Get ready to get pitch slapped, people. As I am finally, at long last, going to give you my review of a great chick flick itself with a little acapella feel to it. Pitch Perfect. Bad days. Entertainment rankings and reviews. Greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Doral, better known to us the Big D, and this time around, I bring to you a review of the 2012 musical comedy flick, Pitch Perfect, released by Universal, along with Gold Circle Films, directed by Jason Moore, ran by Kay Cannon, based on the book of the same name, but in its full entirety, Pitch Perfect, The Quest for... Collegiate Acapella Glory. And Director Moore's own experiences at his alma mater, Northwestern University. Anyway, the film features a big all-star cast that includes Anna Kendrick. I mean, Anna Kendrick, sorry about that. Skylar Aston, Rebel Wilson, Adam Devine, Anna Kent, Brittany Snow... John H Michael Higgins, and Elizabeth Banks, plus a host of others. It focuses on an all-girl a cappella group who compete against another group in their own college to win the Nationals. Well, let's get started. This film did pretty well and what have you. But I'll get to that later on. During the 2011 International Championship of Collegiate a cappella Finals, at the Lincoln Center, Barden University's all-female a cappella group, the Barden Bellas, loses to their all-male rival group, the Barden Troublemakers, due to junior member Aubrey Posen vomiting on stage in the middle of her solo. This incident loses the Bellas' prestige and respect within both the a cappella community and on campus. Four months later, aspiring DJ Becca Mitchell enrolls as a freshman at Barden University at the insistence of her father, a professor at the university, despite having no desire to attend to college. To her father's chagrin, Becca spends her time making mashup mixes of songs and gets an internship at the school radio station, where she meets and befriends fellow freshman Jesse Swanson. At the university's activities fair, now seniors Aubrey and Chloe Beale are attempting to recruit new members for the Bellas, but find that interest in their group has decreased significantly after last year's on-stage incident. Becca walks by her booth and is invited to join them, but she declines and claims she can't sing. Later, Chloe corners Becca after hearing her sing. You, you better be ready for this. Titanium, yes. I forgot I heard the song that's on this movie before I heard it in Megan last year. <laughs> well, so Chloe convinces Becca to audition. In audition, Becca sings a rendition of Cups When I'm Gone, earning herself a place in the bells alongside fellow newcomers, the tough Cynthia Rose Adams, the promiscuous Stacey Conrad, the eccentric Lily Anakura Ramara, Excuse me if I mispronounced that. The humans Patricia, Fat Amy Hobart, as well as Jessica Smith, Ashley Jones, and Denise. Meanwhile, Jesse joins the Troublemakers. Following some sorority antics and extensive training, the Bells participate in the 2012 ICCA Regionals, where at Aubrey's insistence, they perform the same medley to help the Bells advance to the finals of the previous year. The Troublemakers place first, and despite their stale set list, the Bells managed to place second, advancing them to the semifinals. After the competition, the Bells tried to break up a fight between the Troublemakers and the Tonehangers, a male alumni a cappella group. Becca and Fanny accidentally smash a window with the Troublemakers trophy, leading to Becca's arrest by the police. Jesse contacts her father to bail her out, but, but however it causes this, well... Rebecca's frustration causing a rift in her relationship with both. Aubrey insists on performing the same medley a second time, despite Becca urging them to be more daring. In the midst of their next onstage performance, Becca inserts an impromptu layering of bulletproof 
into the sick, hoping to reinvigorate the uninterested audience. Although the audience seems to like Becca's improv improvisation, Aubrey furiously berates Becca after their performance and accuses of her of hooking up with Jesse, a troublemaker, a rule violation punishable by ejection from the bellows. Jesse overhears and attempts to deny it, causing Becca to snap at them both and quit the Bellas. Despite positive reception towards their performance, the Bellas do not advance to the finals, landing in third place behind the Troublemakers and the Footnote. However, Jesse's roommate Benji Applebaum learns that the Footnote's leader is a high school student, leading to their disqualification and allowing the Bellas to advance to the finals. After spring break, Becca tries to reconcile with Jesse, but he rejects her, saying she pushes away everyone who cares about her. And now for the final act in the ending. As always, you know the procedure. You have five seconds to stop this video. Go to the description box below. Fast forward to the time below. As I start counting down right now, if you've seen the movie already, please continue. Okay, you've been warned. During a Bella's rehearsal, growing tensions push the Bellas to stand up to Aubrey, sparking an all-out fight over the pitch pipe. Becca arrives, breaks up the fight, and apologizes to the group for changing the set before asking Aubrey for a second chance. After a heartfelt conversation with all the Bellas, Becca rejoins them, and Aubrey relinquishes her half of the Bellas' leadership to Becca. Chloe discovers that she is able to sing bass notes after her node removal surgery. Meanwhile, Treblemaker's leader Bumper Allen quits the group after being offered a job as a backup singer for John Mayer. With Bumper gone, Jesse convinces the Trebles to open a spot for Benji, which had been previously denied to him despite his impressive audition. At the finals, the Bellas perform a more modern medley arranged by Becca, which includes Don't You Forget About Me, featured in The Breakfast Club, one of Jesse's favorite movies. This acts as a more effective apology, and after the performance, she and Jesse kiss. The Bellas emerge victorious over the Treblemakers and win the national championship. Six months later, auditions are held to recruit new members. End of story. So what did I think of Pitch Perfect? I'm going to say I actually like this movie. This movie is very good. Uh, and it eventually will become a sleeper hit in my opinion. It went on to make $115 million worldwide against its $17 million budget. And everyone was really impressed. While the Spy had lost in its only weekend, lose, well, losing to both Taken 2 and Hotel Transylvania, she still did pretty well. Uh, the film is currently the third highest grossing musical comedy flick behind its sequel and The School of Rock. The film is set to 82% on Ryan Tamale's certified press, saying the film's plot is formulaic, but the performances are excellent and the musical numbers are toe-tapping as well. I agree. I mean, a lot of the musical numbers are pretty good, even though despite my dislike of one song, though, which is, oh, I keep saying that song's name, Party in the USA. Be thankful it was just the all girls in acapella just doing the first bit of it, thank goodness. Couldn't handle any more of that, you know, afterwards, you know. But uh, let me, tr let's try not to get in. Please don't hate me. Please, I don't want to get too controversial on that or anything like that because I have nothing against any of the other musical bits and what have you. Anyway, David L. Stein of NPR selected it as one of the top films of the year. Entertainment Weekly chose the soundtrack as one of the year's best. Roger Ebert praised Rebel Wilson for her. Ebullient, if I mispronounce that, I apologize, unstoppable and raucous performance. But also stating that it's a 20-something song and dance movie built around a ri rival a cappella groups. It's more exciting than dueling string quartets, I suppose, but no, the quartets will be performing better material. That's understandable. Anyway, the film got nominated for numerous awards. It was nominated for set role at the Teen Choice Awards. It won three out of, no, not three, oh, no, four, sorry. 
four of well half well in other words half of its eight nominations because it was up for eight of them. It won favorite comedy movie actress for well not yeah um Rebel Wilson beyond Anna Kendrick for actress Skylar Aston won actor Ben Platt Jaime Lee and Adam Devine well were nominated as well. The only aren't but however but they lost. But Adam Devine did, however, win the Villain Award uh, for a choice movie. Devine was also nominated for Choice Movie Breakout. Because this was one of his early films in my view, have you? And Jaime Lee was up for Scene Stealer, and Ben Platt was up for Scene Stealer as well. He also won a couple awards at the MTV Movie Awards. Rebel Wilson won for Best Breakthrough Performance, and Anna Kendrick and the Gals won Best Musical Moment. So, anywho, I really think Pitch Perfect eventually was a very, very good film. I think its soundtrack is absolutely good, too. It, it went on to become one of the best-selling soundtracks of the next year, as a because right about the spring of 2015, it went platinum. It has so far gone platinum in the U.S. Now, I think the story is pretty good and what have you. Now, as for our cast, Anna Kendrick. This would be the film that I think kind of got me introduced to her. I'm almost sure of it, but no, not yet. Well, after she had more recently appeared in the Twilight Saga. Yeah, this got me into her a little more. She played Becca. She was very good. Skylar Aston plays Jesse. He'd also appear in several other films and what have you including appearing in the last season of the recent CW series, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Rebel Wilson won for her first big performance as Fanny. That gal really stole the show, and that's what really made me like her. She became a great, one of my favorite actresses um, during that time and what have you. Adam Devine, in one of his early roles, played Bumper. He's pretty good and what have you. Very funny. Anna Camp played Aubrey. She was good. Of course, um, she recently played the character of Sarah Newland in HBO's True Blood. She actually would return as that character the following year after this. Brittany Snow, who play plays Chloe, and she had recently played um, Susan Daisy LeMay on Guiding Light and also appeared on the NBC series American Dreams. Let's see, Alexis Knapp played Stacy, very good. Esther Dean played Cynthia, good. Ha May Lee played Lily, yeah, she's soft-spoken, but a talented beatboxer, though. Ben Platt played Benji, he was good. Utkarsh Ambudkar, yeah, um, who had, well... Who had re who has recently appeared in numerous shows? He of course is currently starring on CBS's hit series Ghosts. Play Dong. He's free fight. John Michael Higgins plays a commentator for the ICA ICCA's John Smith, and Elizabeth Banks, who served as producer of the one of the producers of the film, played the, the other commentator. Gail Abernathy McKinney. And there's many others in what have you. So the cast is really good. It's scored on my Christoph Beck and Mark Killian. Killian were, was very good as well. Anywho, Pitch Perfect, definitely a good film. It went on to have two sequels. And um, the second one came out three years later. And two years later, a third one followed. So eventually it became a big trilogy. So... Pitch Perfect, good. It has good tunes. It has a um, a good, a very good cast. Good direction, and yeah, I like the direction and everything. I like everything about it. So overall, would I recommend Pitch Perfect? I would say hell yeah, go for it. Anyway, Pitch Perfect, give it a shot. You might enjoy it.
definitely. This has become one of my favorite chick flicks and what have you over the last decade. So anyway, what did you think of Pitch Perfect? Let me know in the comment section below. If you liked the video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. And join me next time when I bring to you a review of its sequel, Pitch Perfect 2. So if you like this, consider checking out my reviews for these other films. In the upper left-hand corner, you can see my... Well, a mean review of a recent film Elizabeth Banks what well kind of was part of um, working on, and that would be Bottoms, which I did a mean review of that along with Role Play and Freelance. Or go to the upper right hand corner and see my review of a film Rebel Wilson later appeared in, which was Isn't It Romantic? Or if you'd like, maybe you'd like to see my me review, another me reviews I video I did last year, and this would have um, these thrillers in my view. Knock at the Knock at the Cabin and Cocaine Bear, which Elizabeth Banks also took part of. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.